guys and welcome back to City Skylines 2 San Francisco the alternative version I'm your host and creator Legio and hopefully you're enjoying the series otherwise you wouldn't have come back I guess and if you're new to the series please do the typical YouTube stuff below yeah so I'm just kind of sitting here enjoying the view of the Golden Gate Bridge I think it's awesome I think the water looks great too just really enjoying some of the things this game has to offer but Today is a big episode for the city. Um, it's a project I've been putting off because, admittedly, I was a little scared to do it. But today we are going to fix this area right in here. So the windmills are going to get moved, the trains are going to make sense, the highway is going to get made sense. So it's a big, big chore. But before we get into it, I want to go ahead and buy the tiles that we saved from the last episode because I think we're going to need some of those tiles so let's see yeah we're gonna need these tiles at the bare minimum I'm not gonna buy just water for now and then we'll go ahead and get those last tiles okay so now we have a lot of room to work with this is gonna be a pretty beefy episode it's gonna be a lot of uh, fast play guys so hopefully you enjoy that and before we get to it, we're going to bulldoze that building because they're annoying me. But yeah, so sit back, relax, and enjoy a uh, very long anticipated fast play. Alrighty guys, incoming fast play with an overtalk because I figure this is more entertaining than listening to me sit there go ah and um while I figure out this whole area because it took me a little while. And I figure it's more entertaining than listening to my YouTube library of audio music. So this is what it is. Uh, first disclaimer, I between the time of recording this and editing this, I caught a bit of a head cold if you couldn't tell. So please be forgiving as I probably sound like garbage now. But you know, every YouTuber I ever listened to always has a head cold, so I figured I'm allowed to have one as well. So anyways, we start by basically bulldozing everything in the area. We finally clean up the mess that we made ages ago. And then we add another road into the industrial area there. And I really like the way that turned out. Uh, like how in City Skylines 2, you can just line those roads up nice and clean. It looks better than the base game from uh, City Skylines 1. Mods made everything look way better, but the fact that base game can look this good before mods are even available, it's, it's a huge green flag to me. With a lot of the red flags that people have about this game, that's a green flag to me. But anyways, that road's going to alleviate a lot of congestion later in the city, so it's just some future planning. I try to flush out the area, the rail yard, trying to make it look cleaner and more realistic while trying to leave room for future development. I think it turned out alright. Uh, I do know the industrial area is going to get moved. Uh, it's only there because it's vanilla and it needed to go somewhere. And in my idea, back in the olden days, that's where the industrial area was, right there along the waterfront. So it's going to get moved. It's going to get gentrified. Um, we work these roads here with leading into the industrial corridor and stuff like that to just make it look a little cleaner and look like some actual planning was put into it. So anyways, yeah, moving on. So I imagine if you're playing City Skylines, you're probably a city design and history nerd just as much like me. So in the spirit of that, I thought I'd give you some background on San Francisco. Uh, disclaimer, yes, I used Wikipedia to get a lot of the info, and yes, you could look that info up yourself, but it's either me give a rudimentary history lesson or you listening to my YouTube audio library, um, which I think the combination of the two is more entertaining than them separate. So, it's my YouTube channel. I'll do what I want. Uh, I did follow up on many of the links to make sure I understood the points and that they were somewhat accurate. Uh, you're going to have to cut me some slack. This is a low to YouTube channel, not my doc doctoral thesis. So, you know, just if you don't think something's accurate, look it up and let me know in the comments. Don't come at me with violence, though. Much appreciated. Um, anyways, I just know I prefer commentary when I watch these videos. 
it's more entertaining to me, so I guess I'm just projecting onto you guys with what I like. Let me know if you prefer the music or my vain attempt to entertain you in the comments. With all that said, let's get some learning done. So it might be a trivial fact, but I think it's kind of cool. Uh, San Francisco's official name is actually the city and county of San Francisco. Simply means the city is run and maintained as a county as well. For those who aren't familiar with it, I know it's a bit confusing, but it's essentially the city has complete responsibility of its jurisdiction and it only answers to the state and federal government. So there's no county to oversee the city. The city is the county and the county is the city. Um, it's a weird concept if you're not familiar with it, but basically the city is responsible for everything within its borders, where sometimes you'll have the counties responsible for say a particular road or a particular part of infrastructure, such as like rails and stuff like that. Uh, the city just takes all of it, cuts out the middleman, so to speak. And I find that interesting about San Francisco because where I live, uh, St. Louis, the city is its own county as well. So we have St. Louis City County, and then we have St. Louis County, which basically surrounds the entire western border of the city. It's weird, but it's true. You can look that up. It's a little confusing to those who aren't familiar with it, but basically the city is, again, acting as its own county. Uh, if you're not from here, you'll hear uh, St. Louis County, assume it's the city, and it's not. Uh, St. Louis County is places like uh, Clayton, Missouri, Richmond Heights, you know, all the surrounding uh, suburban cities until you get to uh, St. Charles County, which is a good ways west. But yeah. Anyways, it might be a bit of common knowledge, but the city is named in the namesake of St. Francis of Assisi. A little background on him, he was an Italian Catholic friar in the early 13th century who is widely revered by the church. Uh, you can look into a lot of him, but some quick highlights is he's best known for establishing the order of the Franciscan monks. Uh, they're the guys that you'll typically see on TV or in media wearing the brown burlap looking uh, clothing. They typically have their heads shaved where they're bald on top with hair around the rest of their head. You know, that's what they're most famously known for. Uh, he's also known for arranging the first known nativity scene. And then he allegedly received the stigmata, which if you're not familiar with that, look that up. It's basically the markings of the crucifixion. I'm not a religious uh, YouTube channel, so I don't want to get into the validity of it, but he was at least known for it. So, you know, he's a big deal to the Christian faith, which ties into, this ties nicely into the next point, which is, uh, San Francisco's founding, now stick with me here, uh, on March 28th of 1776, which is a pretty important year for American history, uh, we had the Presidio of San Francisco, hopefully I didn't butcher that, which essentially is a military fortress, which was established by the Spanish in the area. And then on October 9th of the same year, they established the mission of San Francisco of yeah, the Mission San Francisco of, of Sissy. Sorry, I butchered all that. Like I said, I'm sick. Um, so that basically started the community because uh, the Spanish would put their cities centered on the mission or the church. Uh, that was the central focal point of the communities for them. Uh, the Spanish were devout Catholics and they had the habit of naming their cities after religious figures from Catholicism or symbols. So, you know, cities such as Los Angeles, San, San Diego, San Antonio, and the list goes on and on and on if you're in the American Southwest or Pacific. So San Francisco's naming just kind of went in with that territory. Uh, so those are the basics of uh, San Francisco's founding in history with uh, when European colonization started. Uh, I wanted to go back a little bit before the Spanish colonization and talk about the native population because sometimes that does get looked over. Um, I'm not going to claim I know a whole lot about uh, Pacific Native Americans. I focus primarily more in uh, Northeastern Native Americans, such as the Haudenosaunee and stuff like that. That was my particular interest. But anyways, let's talk about these people. Uh, the earliest known archaeological evidence shows human habitation around uh, 3000 BCE, so quite a long time. Uh, it was populated by people known as the, I'm going to butcher this, the Olone, H-O-H-L-O-N-E. I'll put it on the screen for you. 
and they were formerly known as the Costonans, and they inhabited the Bay Area. Again, probably butchering that name. Doesn't help that I'm really stopped up. Uh, their range extended from the San Francisco Bay Area down to the Salinas Valley. And I'll put it up on the map here. And again, I'll put a link down below for you to go look at this map. Uh, specifically, the Ramatouche faction, again, hopefully I didn't butcher that name, lived in what is now called the San Francisco Peninsula. This area is one of the densest population centers in the America prior to European colonization. Um, I don't have citations for it, but I know for a fact that central Mexico uh, and then down in the Andes had a large, dense population. But up in northern America, this is one of the uh, denser population areas. So, yeah. Anyways, that's the history lesson. I know I just dumped a lot of information on you, but I find it interesting. And I bet most of you find it interesting as well, even if you're not super into history like me. Because uh, if I know the City Skylines players, and I think I do, because I've been here since the beginning, uh, we're all nerds. So anyways, yeah, like I said, I also included links to the maps that I found down below, so check those out if you like. Again, if you like these history lessons, let me know in the comments, and I'll keep doing them. It's fun for me because I do love history, and I have a degree in it, but since I graduated from college, I rarely get to use it. My job isn't really related to history a whole lot, so this is kind of turning into my outlet now. So anyways, thanks. This has been my TED Talk. So anyways, yeah, what's happening on screen? All right, so basically I uh, talked over the main part of the of the build, which is that big interchange up top. Like we're gonna get some more views of it and I'll talk about it when we get to it. Uh, right now we're rebuilding our first interchange and I get the feeling I'm gonna rebuild this interchange quite a bit because it's, you know, it was the first interchange built in the game. It's in the early stages of the city so things in the early stages just get rebuilt that's that's just the nature of things especially when we uh, move our industrial zone because i know that's going to get moved we're going to gentrify that area turn it into probably high density residential at some point and when it turns into that i want to make the interchange a lot more compact to fit as many housing units in as we can we're just not to that yet so for right now it's going to be fine and it's it's not backing up it's getting it keeps traffic moving so for now it's perfectly serviceable i'm also wanting to wait until a few you know general mods come out on the official uh, modding site because i'm going to wait for that the uh, third parties there's nothing wrong with them i just i don't like going third party on things because in the past I've used third party and it's broken things for me. So I'll just wait for the official uh, mods to come out on the website. It isn't that big a deal. We're not even that far away. So I'm just gonna be patient. Anyways, that's another off-screen topic. Um, so yeah, we now, let's see, right now I'm basically just overlooking my handiwork. And now we get back over into this area, which I'm kind of excited to talk about. <laughs> Perfect timing. Uh, so we're going to build a little bridge right here, and this bridge is eventually going to end up underneath the interchange and give us another access point into the city, because right now we only have that one interchange that lets people get into the city, so we're going to give them a second. As I notice on a lot of Let's Plays on YouTube, um, no, not Let's Plays on YouTube, on Reddit. Wow. Guys, my head cold is really affecting me right now. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I've noticed on Reddit a whole lot of people's cities just basically shut down from one accident and they'll post their pictures and everything and I don't know if they just left off screen but a lot of them only have one access point to their city at that point and that's just not how cities work. I'm not an urban engineer, I'm not a city planner by any means, but you need multiple accesses to your city. So yeah, there's a little rant. Um, so yeah, give them this the second access point. It's right before the interchange, which some people may be screaming, no, don't do that because it's gonna cause a whole bunch of backup and traffic. I try to make the ramps long enough where that's not an issue. And this is actually fairly realistic, at least where I'm at, where you'll have exit, you'll have on and off ramps, exit ramps, and then you'll have a big old interchange. And it's so that people can get going any direction that they wanna go, uh, north, south, east, west. So. That's why I put it there. Also, it just made sense with that main road coming down that way. So, 
yeah anyways that's why I did that it makes a lot of sense when you see it I believe but I really really want to shout out the road building tools because um, you saw me build that curve and it was just so easy to build that curve with the integrated uh, snapping features that they stole from uh, Precision Engineering. One of the better in-game features that they have. Uh, if I was doing a top 10 things I like about City Skylines 2, that'd be like probably one or two. So, really like that feature. And now we're just going to start connecting up that road with the interchange. Again, just giving them that new access and exit point from the city. Because uh, this city is not going to have a whole lot of highway. I'm going to try to primarily follow what San Francisco did in uh, avoiding a lot of highway use. Because, A, I want to, like, it's a vanilla build and I don't want it to be a replica of San Francisco by any means. But I want to at least follow the themes and ideas of San Francisco, if that makes sense. Uh, and then in the coming videos, it's going to feel a little bit more San Francisco-y. That's not even a word, but I'm going to make it a word. A little bit more like the Bay Area because we're getting stuff unlocked, we're getting cash flowing in, so I have more ability to to break out and do that kind of thing. Because early game, you just kind of, kind of follow a formula of building what you can to get the city going. But later on, you get a lot more freedom to city paint, as I call it. So, yeah. By the way, I really love that loop. Uh, I know there's probably better ways to build that loop, but that's the way I built it. Um, and I still think it turned out good because again, I did it without move it. I did it without node controller. I did it without network anarchy. So it all turned out really nice, I think. And I give you a pretty good overview at the end of the episode. Uh, yeah, again, I'm recording this probably a week. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm talking over this about a week after I filmed this. So I kind of forget where things are. So the time is a little off. I apologize. Uh, we do clean up the rail area down there a little bit and then we create another little uh little it's a main road we create a main thoroughfare for this area because like i said later on uh it's going to turn into residential so i want to make sure i have a good road access for later development also for now it's just going to kind of serve as a uh an outlet for us to put industry or any kind of city services down in this area that i'm smoothing out down here um yeah, so I just want to kind of have some forethought into my planning. So I run a main road down here just to make sure that I have access down there for later development. Nothing too special. I just had to make the terrain work for me instead of working with the terrain. I just activated God mode and did what I did what I wanted to do. Because it's my sandbox city, not yours. All right, now that I got that unneeded hostility out of me, um, basically we just move on to building a road that's going to run along this waterfront right here. Uh, not exactly to begin with. This is acting as like a guide for later development. I know I'm going to rework this road, but I wanted to get this started because I know I want this road to inevitably run up to the highway that's off screen right now and connect up there because I know for a fact I don't want to run a highway down this way. It doesn't look like San Francisco has a highway running down this way. It looks like they primarily use uh use general roads and strodes and stuff like that but i first got this area started by getting the road running out this way to give me a general guideline and then i fight with the the heights of the map again uh just saying if you want a challenge in this city get the san francisco map and try to build on it because the hills here are insane i don't know if it's like that in real san francisco i think it is i think the city is pretty hilly but it, it's difficult to work with on this map. Anyways, we then start expanding our train lines a little bit. Uh, no stations or anything get built. I basically just run them to the point of getting them under the interchange because I didn't want to do that later. I want to I want to try to have a plan, a semblance of a plan going forward, so that everything just comes together at the end. So you'll see me uh, trench these train tracks and get them running under the under the roads. Um, it's a bit of a challenge, especially without the mods. I know I've said it a lot, but I just got spoiled with them. Because here, what I would typically just do is page down and it's done. It's over with. Whereas now I have to go get the terrain tool and I have to uh, flatten everything out and get, and get slopes looking good and then run the track underneath and 
does that look good? No, delete it. And delete and repeat, delete and repeat. And then I run into pillars because I don't have anarchy, so then I have to delete the roads and then run the road underneath. Um, generally, it, it's tedious, but I think the end results are good. You'll see it in the in the ending cinematics and everything. I really like the way everything turns out, and it keeps the rails looking smooth and natural to me. So just one major infrastructure project. But yeah, that's basically all the commentary I say after talking for dang near 20 minutes. So. I'll see you guys in the outro. Well, alrighty guys, that took a little while, but we got where we needed to go, and I think this thing is pretty slick. I like it. It's definitely a Legio original, that's for sure. Um, a little complicated here and there. May have overdone it a smidge, but I like it. It's functional. They're driving on it, no error messages, what more can you ask for? But yeah, really happy with this interchange. It took longer than I wanted it to, but don't they always take longer than you want them to? Um, yeah, that's about really it. <laughs> that's about all we got done this episode. We reworked some of the trains down here. We extended some roads for later use. We extended this road out here, that's for later use. And uh, we got our trains going underneath. So, yeah, I think it looks a lot cleaner, too. Um, I'm getting better with the terrain tool, getting better with the tools in general. I'm just ready for Move It to come in. If I had Move It, this would have taken half the time. Like, no joke. Network multi-tool, it takes a tenth of the time. But, you know, we can always keep hoping that we get them soon. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the build. I know not a whole lot got done, but if you enjoy interchanges, you at least got some of that. So... Anyways, again, thanks for the support. Leave a like and or subscribe down below, and I'll see you in the next one.